I'm not here to tell you that artificial intelligence, AI, will save us or that AI will destroy us. I won't tell you either that artificial intelligence, AI, will develop the perfect therapy. First, because I don't think that perfection exists. And second, because we are still the, crea the creators, at least nowadays. Let's see what's happening in the future. But we will see different ways of how the technologies, and specifically artificial intelligence, really affect the way we perceive reality. And connected to that, our psychological point of view. Let me start with the word therapy. If we use the etymology of the word, it comes from the Greek word therapeia, that means to treatment, cure, healing. But if we, will, if we really want to know uh, all the knowledge that is really connected to healing and to curing, we need to go to a lot of ancient civilizations, like Persia, like India, like China, Greek also. And why I'm saying that? Because we are doing the same with artificial intelligence. Sometimes we use the knowledge of a culture, of a, of a time, and we use it as a general uh, understanding of that knowledge. And we need to know that every word and everything it is really connected to our culture. It did, and this really changed the way we perceive reality. There are a lot of studies that said that different kind of pathologies are associated with different countries and different places. We sometimes forget the importance of the context when we talk about these kind of things. And we do the same with artificial intelligence and with my field, artificial emotions. So with artificial intelligence, we are assuming that we are replicating the intelligence of a human when we are just trying to simulate little parts of what we understand what intelligent it is. The same happened with artificial emotions. When I started trying to create models about artificial emotions, I really wanted to know what was the emotions that we need to interact with a robot or with a machine. So during all this process, I also questioned myself the idea of artificial and that uh, the idea also why I call them emotions is if they are not really emotions. So thinking about that and thinking about this kind of research, I ask my parents two questions. First of all, imagine that you are going to death or to die. And you can choose between having a human by your side or a robot. What would you choose? So my dad said, and my mom, a human, both of them. But a nicest human, let's just start there. OK, second scenario. Imagine now that you can choose between holding your hand to a robot or dying alone. So, what would you prefer in that case? So my daddy said, I'd rather prefer to, be, to die alone. The, the hands of the robots are cold, made of cables, and with no emotions. No, Paco, my mother said, they are doing hands with silicon that look like humans. And you can, you can really think it's a human. I'd rather prefer the robot. So that made me question a lot of things like, it is, do we need real things? Or if things look like real, we perceive it as real. I was researching during that process also, and I found that there are already companies that are using the voice, offering to use the voice of a dead person as a virtual assistant. And I asked that a lot to my students. Would you like to have the voice of someone that is dead, like your, your grandma, your, fa your grandfather, your brother, your sister? as a virtual assistant? Almost everyone said no. It will change the personality, because it's not the same person. They told me things that they were really, really, really interesting about that. And I asked my colleagues, my psychological colleagues, what do you think this will happen if we're still using these kind of technologies? 
well, we will lose the idea of learning how to let letting go someone. So this is a future scenario that it could happen. And in the case of this scenario happen, we know that we have been losing a lot of things that we used to think they were right. The same happened with a lot of therapies. We thought a lot, a lot of therapies were amazing in the past, and now we see them as tortures. So in the case that this could happen, I already have noticed, for example, and this is something that everyone that is older says to younger people, always, our times were better. We used to have better memory than you have. We used to remember things. So it is true that we change things, and that every time that technology yeah, brings a new thing, we change the way we perceive reality. And with that, we have different kinds of pathologies. But every time that we lose something, we gain other things. And I realized, for example, that my student has less attention than we had, but they have an amazing way of, proceeding, of perceiving and, and to talk about their emotions that we didn't have. So we don't know really what will happen, but we know that we are really connected to our circumstances and to our context to understand that. So this, remember, a quote of one of my favorite philosophers that is called Ortega y Gasset. It's a Spanish philosopher that I will say in, in Spanish, and I, then I will translate it. He said, yo soy yo y mi circunstancia, y si no la salvo a ella, no me salvo yo. This means this, I am I am my circumstance, circumstance, and if I don't save it, I don't save myself. What is circumstance? Everything that is not I. Weather, places, family, our memories, the way we perceive the memories. Everything, like the place that we where, where we born, everything that it is that is not I, that is. So I try to think, okay, if I was Ortega with this kind of artificial intelligence technology, how are we going to give a meaning and to understand these circumstances that we are um, having right now? For him, saving is to give a meaning. When we understand how technology works, we give a meaning also of how we uh, have a relation with technology. So there is a huge debate nowadays about if we have to use this kind of AI systems or not, and, uh, and about what it means. Again, we know that systems that look like real, we perceive it as real. So maybe in the future, we are talking a lot, a lot about the AI are conscious, have emotions, I will tell you that no, not yet, for sure. But I was questioning myself that if we perceive all these AI technologies as real, maybe we are the ones that are going to see emotions there, not the technology itself. For, so I really think it's so important to talk about this, not just from the technological point of view to add philosophers, psychologists, professors, parents to this debate that we are having about how we, we should proceed with different kinds of technologies. Because we can really develop technologies that really help us, and that really, like, like for example, it was with the MRI, really make a huge impact in medicine. But this doesn't make disappear the doctors or anything. It just gave us another way to understand reality and how it was. So I was thinking about this idea of Kaden, and that's my dog. So I put this image into my facial recognition of my system, and the recognition said that this was me and that this was a cat. It always said my dog is a cat because of the ears. And I was thinking, if I will be an AI system, that I'm not, how I will understand that. So I realize I'm a human. So when I see this picture, what I see, the ray of sun that is there, I see myself, I see one of my best friends, I see the ring, for example, that came from my mom. The AI system is not going to say uh, uh, never all the memories that has my ring. 
So I think sometimes we forget that we are much more than a bunch of data when we walk in the street and we receive, receive an advertising about something. And I think we need to remember also like a little bit that technology looks so cool and it's so nice to develop systems that really enhance the way we perceive and really help how we develop in society. But I would like to remember a little bit that you, 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 all of you are much more complex than any AI system that I have developed or tried. And I thought it was nice to share that idea with you. Thank you.